Hey, everybody. Welcome to another Michaels Community Classroom class. We're so excited you've all joined us today. My name is Juan. I'm going to be moderating this class today, and we're joined alongside the lovely Kirsten Jones. And hey, so everyone. <laughs> and today, Kirsten's going to be showing us um, a couple different ideas to make some very unique DIY crates to keep all your things organized for the new year. You know, everybody always has that big New Year's resolution to get a little bit more organized. Absolutely. So yeah, so today Kirsten's going to show us some uh, really cute ways to make uh, crates with um, some awesome crate surfaces that they have at Michael's and kind of make it your own and make it unique and put your own little touch on it. So without further ado, Kirsten, I think we're about ready. Emma, thanks so much. So exactly what Emma said. It's the new year. Everyone is wanting to organize and we have noticed everywhere but michael's especially has so many of these awesome metal baskets um, they've got big ones for magazines they've got all these cute little desk accessories and the great thing about these is they're everything from kind of a farmhouse trend they even go a little modern a little art deco so there's so many people that love this simple metal crate storage units and what we want to show you today is just what emma said is how to make it your own by adding color by using fabric and paint and we laughed about it here in the studio a great thing about this technique is you can put much smaller things into your crate because these metal crates as awesome as they are they're limited to what's going to fall out of the bottom so we did this here in the studio and now we keep brushes and markers and colored pencils so not only is it adorable but it lets you hold um, a whole bunch of different stuff so it's so simple what we used for this one this is the one that we're going to craft in today's class what we used is just some basic fabric squares this is just a plain um just a very natural almost like a drop cloth fabric square that michaels carries and then all i did here is i picked a color palette that was best for me and you'll see i wanted to kind of teach you guys this trick I have regular folk art, which is my favorite acrylic, but then I've also got multi-surface um, folk art, which is perfect for just what it says, for wood, for fabric, for glass. But what I definitely wanted to emphasize today is when you are doing, we're painting on fabric, which would imply that you need multi-surface, but the fabric is not necessarily having to function as fabric. So it doesn't have to be soft. It doesn't have to be washed in the machine. Um, so you can use any folk art acrylic that you want. So pick your palette based on the color that you like, not necessarily the formula. These formulas are awesome, Emma, but they're best when you're using, when the, the surface that you're using is, is functional. And this is just fun and decorative. So definitely enjoy picking from any folk art colors and any folk art formula. So the first thing we did is just super, super easy. I cut the fabric. What I did is I measured a piece of fabric that would go the width of the crate that I'm working on. And then, so that's about this size. And all I'm doing, and again, I am not, I didn't pre-wash this. I didn't have to do that because it's not having to work as functional fabric. It's not a pillow or a t-shirt or a pair of jeans. It's only decorative. So I have cut this fabric and now I am just going to squeeze out the folk art colors that I like best for my palette. I'm going to put a couple on my plate. You can see two of them were just regular folk art acrylic and one of them is multi-surface. And I am going to use a one inch brush. I'm not going to add any water because when you add water to fabric, it tends to bleed a little bit and expand on the fabric. So I'm going to use a dry brush and I'm just going to dip that in the first color. This is folk art fire coral. And then I am just going to very loosely, no pattern needed, paint a long stripe. And one thing that I love about the look that we're trying to achieve on this particular project is you don't want a solid base coat. You kind of want to see that texture of that fabric canvas through there. So I'm just going over it in some spots, but not getting a perfect line. I want that very loose painterly look. I love that unevenness of that Kirsten. It's really uh, unique looking. 
It's just a very easy way. Now, if you wanted a very perfect line, you could always use some craft tape and get a solid line, but I really like the openness and the texture of the paint on this canvas. Very so just again, a very loose line. I'm gonna clean off my brush. I said no water, but I'm cleaning it in the water. Just make sure when you do that, you dry it really, really well on your paper towel. And then I'm gonna go into that next color. And this is one of my favorite colors. This is Minted Aqua. And this is just a regular acrylic for folk art. And the same thing, I'm not gonna to touch the two because the fire coral is still wet, but just right next to that, I'm gonna do another very loose stripe. Because what we're doing is we're making the, the pattern and the fabric that we are gonna then cut and thread through our crate. Can you guys see, that's my favorite thing. Can you see where the fabric texture shows through? That's why I chose this heavier fabric so that you would get that beautiful texture. Totally. And Kirsten, uh, Cricut said you could totally um, match the colors of the project that you're making today with the colors that we did for our desk organization project on our Michaels class last week. So if you haven't checked that out already, um, just like this craft today, that craft was recorded and it lives on michaels.com under their community classroom page and on Michaels YouTube channel. So if you haven't checked that out yet, you should go check it out. And if you need to watch this video again for reference, um, you can at your own leisure, leisure. So that's good to keep in mind throughout the live stream today. That's a great idea, Emma, because if you had a color palette that was like perfect for your home decor or just something that you loved, you could keep that paint in all the classes that we teach. You could kind of alter your palette so it matched and just became a beautiful set of accessories. That's a great idea. Totally. Okay, I'm gonna do another stripe just to show you guys how to kind of cover this piece of fabric with enough strips to then cover up our crate. And you can see, I just really want you guys never to overthink the area between the stripes, because remember, we're gonna cut these out and that's not gonna matter. You just wanna use as much as of the fabric just so we don't waste any. So that's why I'm putting them close enough together but not touching because the paint is wet, but just close enough to keep that straight line and that, that really cute whimsical pattern going on the entire piece of fabric. See how they're a little bit different, but the color just, the colors work so well together. Kirsten Cricket said um, those first three colors that you painted on there look like great Valentine's colors. This would be a cute way to present a valent. Even you could present a present in that. You could make some cookies or and deliver it in a crate rather than wrap it with gift wrap. That's a great idea. And the neat thing about this is what we're doing to this crate can last as long as you want it to last. You can cut it off. You can change it. You could even do it for Christmas. You could do more pastels for spring. There's so much that you could do by accenting this, but then always having the crate. And just one more, this bright aqua, again, one of my favorite colors in the folk art line. But just a very loose stripe. Okay. So now that we've got those, what you would do, the acrylic paint dries really fast. So this would probably take about 20 minutes to dry. We don't have to heat set it because again, it's just decorative. I'm gonna set that over there. And then I magically have a piece that is dried. And you'll see same thing, different order a little bit, but these are dry. And now all we are going to do is cut those out. And I'm just going to cut close to each stripe. But you don't have to measure, you don't have to trace, you don't have to have a perfect pattern. You're just cutting strips of fabric. Now what I'm going to do here and make sure you guys do this is I'm going to cut the spacing between my stripes off 
so that my piece of fabric is not too big once we start weaving it through the crate. Thank so you. see, just, just that space in between each color, I'm gonna cut that off and throw that away. And then cut my yellow. Oh, go ahead, Em. Sorry, I keep interrupting you. Do you no, have not at all. Do you have any good tips um, for how to measure the length of the strips that you'll need to fill through your crate? What I did is I used, you can use a soft um, measuring tape, which is a great way to do it. And you would just lay it on one side of your crate, just kind of lightly wrap it around. And that would give you an idea of, of the length of the strips that you would need for each crate. Okay. And then there again, the center area that's not painted, I'm just gonna cut that close to the next color. And cut that off and just cut out the colored section of the fabric. One thing that would be fun, Michaels has a great assortment of fabric. They have black, they have some with really soft patterns. Um, you could do something really fun with that too. You could add paint or stripes to a different color fabric to even a fabric with a little bit of a pattern on it. So really have fun when you're choosing your different fabrics to accent your crates with. Okay, so I've got a yellow stripe. I've got a pink stripe, this blue one, I'm gonna cut that, those white edges off of, They're just little scrap pieces that then you'll just throw away. Oh, there we go. Okay. Just keep gathering all of your strips until you have a bunch cut out. This would be a great craft for kids too. They could paint the fabric, then mom could cut out the fabric, and then they could just spend the afternoon weaving their little crates either for their room or a gift for somebody, but just a great craft for kids. I love that idea and it doesn't even have to be in a straight line for kids i feel like oh, sure. fun with that it would be just a bunch of scribbles that you cut up into cute little strips wouldn't that be so cute for their arts and crafts supplies they would love that i'm going to cut one more out and then i'm going to show you guys how easy it is to just thread through these adorable metal crates Okay, that would be cute, Emma. Just give them a piece of fabric and let them paint whatever they want. They could even do, they could, um, they could use a stencil or they could do their hand prints. There's so much that they could do on this fabric. Okay, so you guys keep cutting if that's what you're doing, but cut out all of your strips and you will just have an assortment of colors on the, on the fabric. So this is another crate that Michaels carries. This is more of a desk tray, maybe for um, papers or schoolwork. And so all you have to do, just like you would weave um, any other type of basket, is you just want to start on one end and just start with it over the top. Let me see if you guys can see this. So you want where you start to go over this final edge because we are going to glue that. You don't want to, can you guys see that? You don't wanna start underneath first because then you won't have coverage on the very top of your crate. So you wanna start by just placing it over the top of the top piece of metal. And I'm gonna use just a little dot of hot glue on the very edge of my strip. And then I'm just gonna sandwich that together. And what I'm doing is I'm gluing the fabric to the fabric. Can you see that? I'm just wrapping it around the top of the crate and gluing the fabric to the fabric. I know that's hard to see. And then all you're doing, I'm gonna get the end of that strip, is you are going back and forth, back 
and forth, alternating, let me make sure, alternating every other one, I guess almost like you would when you're lacing your shoes. Back and forth, in one, out the other. Once I get this in there, you guys will be able to see very easily. Kirsten, in our last um, crate class with Michaels, I did a similar technique, but um, lacing sounds a lot more professional. I said that I was hugging each of the... But hugging is so much sweeter. So I am, I'm gonna use hugging. I am hugging each piece of metal from the crate. But yeah, you're just going back and forth, under and over, under and over to just get that woven in that slat of the crate. Over and under. The corner is a little bit smaller, so I'm gonna go in there. Kirsten, Gail said it's like making a pot holder. It is like making a pot holder, absolutely. Oh my gosh, I made so many of those when I was little. Yeah. On that little thing with the little claws. Yeah. And then at the very end, I'm just gonna trim Leave a little bit, leave about an inch, because then I am gonna apply just a little bit of hot glue again. You're not gluing it to your crate, which again is a great thing because then when you wanna change your colors or change your pattern, you just cut this right off and there's no glue on your crate. And it'll be hard to see, but can you see how it just goes every other one? Really? And you are just weaving that to get a really pretty color palette. We'll do one more. I'm gonna do the yellow so you guys can see it. So I'm starting at the top. I'm gonna to apply a little bit of glue on the edge of my strip of fabric. And I'm gonna just glue fabric to fabric. Just like that. And then I'm gonna just start threading it through. This is such a great craft and great for every single age group. Mm -hmm. So under, just pull it through. It's a great craft for working on uh, motor skills too for elementary aged kids. Absolutely. It dresses up these beautiful metal crates just enough to make them your own. Totally. And you know what you could do? You could have so much fun with it. Like I could skip two pieces of metal and go in to have a longer strip of fabric. So really be creative. But I'm just gonna do every other one for this one. And then you just pull that tight. Look at how many small paper clips we can put in this crate once we're done. <laughs> then I'm just gonna trim it again. A little bit of glue on the fabric only, not on the edge of the metal crate. And then just fold that over. Gosh, I feel like that's happened to me so many times when I carry things in crates and I like take it somewhere, then I lose. Right, half of the and crate. everything falls out of the bottom. Yeah, I and know, I it's so and I never learned my lesson, so. <laughs> Me neither, because you love the metal crates. They're just so beautiful. Um, and one thing that someone said in the studio, I thought this was a cute idea. So the outside is painted because this is a bigger, more shallow cr um, crate. You could either paint both sides of your fabric strips so that you had color on the bottom, or you could even flip it over so it was white on the outside and colored on the inside but there's so much that you can do with it. So this one will have color on the edge, but the inside will be white. But if your kid did it, wouldn't it be fun if they did stripes on one side and then they maybe splattered the inside? So it was almost like two different patterns. So let's do one more. And you know what I'll do on this one? I'll do the color going up. Okay, yeah, that'd be good to see. So I am just going to, again, just a little bit of glue on the edge of my strip. I'm going to attach that to the fabric. It's almost like a friendship bracelet, but not really, yeah. where you have so much variety and so much that you can do. 
Ooh, Fran said you could do it in team colors or school colors. Yep, you definitely could. That would be a great idea. Great idea. If you have you any, could, know any uh, like teenagers or young adults going to college, this would be a great little gift basket for their first year at college. And just organizing. We all are so eager to organize in the beginning of the year. And this is just such a fun way to get the whole family involved and add some color to your home organization project. And then you can just see the difference where the color is now on the bottom or on the top of the crate as opposed to on the bottom. Totally. And then you just trim it the same way that you've been doing. And then just add a little bit of glue. I love hot glue because it, it attaches instantly and it just makes it such an easy way to craft. But see, you would just keep going until your entire crate is covered with fabric. Such a fun way to accent your, your metal crates. I wanna show you guys this one one more time. We just went back and forth. The inside's white, but you've just got such, such a, a personalized crate as opposed to just a plain metal one. So I wanna show you guys just some more fun ways to do different kinds of crates. So everybody in the office absolutely loves this one. This is just, again, a metal crate that Michaels carries, the same exact fabric. And what we've done on this one is I just took a basic floral stencil that Michaels carries. This is a folk art stencil. I love this small floral pattern and I'm just using a navy blue. And you'll see the same rule applies. This is multi-surface, which is perfect for fabric, but you can also use any regular folk art color that you love because the fabric is not gonna have to be functional. So all I did was the same type of fabric. I'm gonna just apply that stencil. One tip when stenciling, I always tell people this, I used to hate to stencil because it always seemed to bleed under. The key to stenciling is never, ever, ever have any water in your brush. You want your brush totally dry. Get a new palette. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of this dark blue on my palette. When you stencil, you wanna dip into the paint. Again, no water. And then you wanna remove most of that paint, either on the side of your palette or on a paper towel. So you're just gonna position that anywhere on your fabric because you're gonna repeat whatever stencil design you like all over a piece of fabric. So then you can cut it into strips exactly the way we did for our first basket. And I am just gonna create a really soft floral pattern onto this piece of fabric. And you're just swirling, Kirsten? Yes, I am swirling. Some, there's really two types of, of stencil techniques. One is pouncing, which a bunch of people love, and I love that as well. And then swirling. Really use whichever one you're most comfortable with. But the key to stenciling is very, very little paint always on your brush. When you pick up paint, always remove it on the side and then never ever any water. You know how earlier we cleaned our brush in water, our regular paintbrush, and then we dried it on the paper towel? That rule does not apply to a stencil brush. You, that's not dry enough. You want it to dry overnight if you're um, cleaning it with water. It's a great so I, yeah, it's a, someone taught me that years ago. And I'm telling you, stenciling has become almost one of my favorite things now. No water and very, very little paint. Another great thing about this fabric, how it showed the texture when we were doing those large stripes, it's also going to do that when we're stenciling, which is just such a beautiful look. Love it. Kirsten Cricket said, um, this would also be a fun idea, uh, sorry, <laughs> la, la, la. fun idea <laughs> to give to teachers with um, cute little gifts with hand sanitizer and tissues and all those other uh, basic necessities that you want to give to your awesome teachers. That is such a great idea. This little crate that we also had at Michael's, I'm just going to show you guys real quick. That is such a cute little size for a teacher's desk. And the only difference is you would just do your strips a little bit smaller but that is such a great idea. So I am just gonna stencil this section. 
a little bit more up here in the corner. And then when you remove your stencil, you've got that beautiful floral pattern. And all I would do is I would just continue to repeat this very casually because you're cutting it into strips. So you don't have to line it up too perfect. You would just kind of line it up where the gaps are. And then I would just stencil again, maybe three or four times until you get enough fabric to cover your entire crate. You can tape your stencil down. That's always a really good tip. Stencil, all, or I'm sorry, tape all four edges so it doesn't move around too much. I'm just holding it down for now, but do again, whatever is most comfortable for you. And Kirsten, for those people who have never stenciled before, if they didn't use any stencil tape, what would be a good way if they like lost their place on the stencil to kind of troubleshoot that issue? Um, if it wiggles a little, you can see most of, I think actually all of the folk art stencils, which are so easy to work with, are a clear material. You can see on there, you can see my hand through there, is a clear material. So it's so easy to line it back up and you would just line that right back up to the areas that you painted. And then you would just continue to add paint. Awesome. This is a great way to be a beginner stenciler because again, we're cutting it into small strips and stenciling on fabric is very forgiving because it grabs your paint and it grabs your stencil. So nothing usually bleeds under if you use a dry brush and very little paint because a lot of your paint just goes right into the fabric. So it's a great place for a new stenciler um, to kind of learn the techniques and get really, really comfortable by stenciling on fabric. And really that paint went a long way, Kirsten. Oh, because you use almost none. You're almost using a brush that is just really tinted with the color because you want to remove it. Every single time you pick up paint, you want to remove any extra. So it takes very little paint when you're stenciling, especially on fabric. Because let me show you this. This might be hard to see on the screen, but maybe if I hold it up. I love how, well, let's see if I can be still enough. Oh, back, there we go. See how there's dark areas of blue and light areas of blue. It almost looks like I used a few shades of blue, but I only used one color. Can you kind of see that? Yes. That is because you have less and more paint on your brush, but it just creates such a beautiful pattern. So I'm not gonna cover this completely, but I just wanted you guys to see how easy it was to make um, a beautiful pattern onto the fabric. And then what we would do is we would just cut this into strips again, like we did, like we did for the colorful one. You would kind of measure, you don't have to be exact, but you would measure the distance in between your slats. You would cut your strips into that size and you would thread it exactly the same way. So such a fun way to accent this. This would be great this way for your pantry. Now look, all your kids' snacks are not gonna fall out on the floor. And it's just so cute. It's such a cute, almost like a farmhouse, so floral cute. farmhouse look. No more floor gummies. No, no more floor gummies. Such a cute idea. And then I wanted to show you guys this one really quick. So this is for more of the modern, um, maybe the modern desk, the modern home decor. Um, color palette. This was super fun. Let's see if you guys can see it. So this is Folk Art Extreme Glitter, which is absolutely, it's hard to see on there. It's absolutely the most beautiful glitter. It has these giant flakes. It's um, got such good coverage. Let's see, can you guys tell in there just how sparkly it is? So all I did is the same thing. I did a piece of fabric with glitter on it. I let that dry. I did a piece of fabric. This is our treasure gold, which I'm trying to see if you guys can see how gold and metallic it is. But I just added that to the fabric and then we wove that through for the more modern desk. Mm -hmm. So there's so many different paints that you can do. And the biggest tip I have for this is it doesn't have to say safe for fabrics because the fabric is only decorative. So use glitters, use metallics, use any color palette in the folk art line to make it the color palette that you want to work with. 
Kirsten, someone had a great question. They want to know if you can use this technique for wooden crates. Oh, absolutely. You know what? I think we might have a class up for Michaels, but we did, don't we? Yes, so we did have, that's a great question. We had a, um, a crate organization class a while back and it, and right now it's on michaels.com under their community okay. page to rewatch or you can watch it on Michael's YouTube channel. And we kind of show a little technique how to kind of weave between the crate with embroidery thread, which would be pretty similar to what Kirsten showed us how to do today. Absolutely, so you could do, we did thread and I think on a bigger wooden crate, Emma, if I'm right, we did yarn. Yes. Um, but you could do the same thing with fabric. You could do the same. You could alternate fabric and yarn. There's just so much that you can do. And we love at or we love accenting a wood or a metal craft with something soft like yarn or fabric. That's such a popular trend right now. So yeah, great question. Okay, so that is that is how to accent a metal crate for the new year. All right. Thanks so much, Kirsten. So once thanks, again, thanks guys. We want to give Michaels a huge thank you for allowing us to host this class for you all today. Um, and like we said, it has been recorded. So um, in a couple days, it'll be on michaels.com under the community classroom page um, or on their YouTube channel, their Michaels YouTube channel. So yeah, everybody, thank you so much for watching. You, and we'll guys. see you next time. Bye, everybody.